All right, next up in the workshop, Giga Robo. More giant robots. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. We are into the final stages of the Giga Robo. As you can see, I have been well and truly busy during quarantine, during lockdown. He looks pretty cool, doesn't he? I think so. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to do some final highlights, bring some stuff to life. You know, he looks pretty good as he is. Um, what's a few little highlights here and there? Oh, look, it's my bum. I'll turn you around. There you go. Now you can stare at everybody. Kind of. There you go. Kind of see. Shh, shh. You know, so, we're going to just do a few little edge highlights here and there, just kind of help bring, bring him to life. And, uh, I think it'll look. I think it'll look pretty good. I'm just gonna put them off to the side there while we pick our colors. And we're gonna start with the yellows, cause why not? There's no real right or wrong. There's no reason why I'm starting with the yellows over any any other color. I just figured yellow. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the. Small layer brush. Not so hard to form to. There we go. Got a little bit of yellow. We don't need a whole lot of yellow. We can kind of water it down and put it on the edges. Now, some of the stuff I've kind of had to make up for colors, whatever, and some of it I've tried to follow along as best as I can with what they've with what they've put out. And I hope I've done, you know, I hope when the Giga Robo team sees this that they think I've done okay. You know, it's not 100% perfect. But I like it. And they like it. Mission accomplished. And you know, on, on another note, I hope everybody's still staying safe out, staying safe out there. I hope everybody is still practicing their social distancing, wearing masks when they have to. Or, you know, when they're asked to. I know when I go out and about, when I have to go out and about, if I need to wear a mask, I have one with me. Some stores are being very kind and providing a mask for you if you don't have one.
pretty soon it might get to the point where it's, you know, no shoes, no shirt, no mask, no service. And if that's the case, well, that's just the case. You know. It's the new norm for now. You know, you do what you got to do. looking and I try my, try my best not to pull it up up on out of the way for you guys Oh, and I want to say, uh, what was it, I think, last weekend was Memorial Weekend for our people down in the States. So all my paint slingers down there. Who watch? Happy Memorial! Happy Post Memorial Day! And uh, you know, hope you stay again. Hope you're staying safe and doing what you're asked to do. There we go. I'm just gonna hit some of the some of the points today. And just to make it look a little bit more alive. Hopefully it uh, brings a little bit of life to this guy. Okay. You know, edge highlighting is really easy when you have the edge, it keeps it nice and thin for you. But when you have to make up an edge, that's where it can get a little tricky. And you want to, have to make sure that your paint flows nice. Yeah, I kind of like how he's looking. 
because there's that little spark of life to them. Like I said, we're not going to do every edge, every little detail. If we did that, we'd be here for hours. But I want to give you guys kind of the general idea of some of the stuff that, we're, that I'm going to do. Or that I'm doing. I guess. That's the right way to say it. Now this guy's got some pretty thin parts. I just want to take a little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra care. When you're painting these, find ways to Prop yourself so that you can still hold the model fairly steady. And if it's, you know, if it's a little thicker than what you want, just go back to the original, original color that you painted. And thin the line a little bit. Easy peasy. If some of these lines on here are a little thicker than the one I like, but also, kind of at the same time, it gives it that. I don't know, it kind of gives it that different, a different look, a different feel. And I just leave them. If I don't like it, I'll go back and tidy it up, of course. And sometimes the longer or the wider line actually looks looks a little better. You know, play with it. See what you like. There we go. Yeah, look at how that's turning out. And what you can do, if you want, you, you can actually do a two-layer highlight. It's 
So we highlight the edge, or highlight highlight all of the edge, or as much as you want highlighted. And then at the very sharpest corners and stuff like that, you you pick another color that's a bit appropriate, you know, another appropriate light lightness. And you just add it to the very tips, to the very tip top corners, and it kind of helps them stand out a little bit more. All right. What should I use for a highlight on the blue? Now, like I said, we're not going to do. You know, we're not going to do all the edging because I mean, we're already halfway through today's episode and I've just finished the yellow. So all we're going to do is we're just going to hit a few spots and. Uh, Kind of go from there. You know what? I'm going to use this color, which is Lothran blue. And we take some. Put it on the palette. If we just do a few swipes. And the blue helps the blue kind of And live a little, makes it pop. It's pretty cool. Of course, this is just one way of highlighting. There are several different ways of highlighting. So there's the wet blend highlight technique there is the well that's good there's a lot There's the edge highlight. There's also, I mean, you can, which is the one that I'm doing, but you can also do um, just a wash. Just leave it like that. As the wash should settle into the recesses. leaving you with a highlight and a low light built basically built into one. It's kind of what the contrast paints do from GW. And they're very cool. Haven't had too much of an opportunity to work with them yet. But that's yet.
we are. The part that I'm kind of looking forward to, do, to doing the edge highlighting is the uh, face that's on the chest. I think that'll be uh, really interesting to do. Can't, can't wait to tackle that. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tackle that right now. Why? Because I can. I'm the paint slinger so I can do what I want. And I knew it was going to be cool when I pull them off the pull them on the oh, pull them off the shelf for the workbench. Getting so excited that I'm not you know taking my time like I should. Back in a little bit more control. <laughs> I think I said I was so excited. To do parts of them. And I just, you know, had to get there. Along pretty good, I think. We've got a long way to go. But if you kind of want to get a close up of what I'm you know, kind of see that. There you go. You can kind of see the edging. Kind of adds a little bit of spark to them. Right there. He's coming along pretty good. I like him. We are going to work a little, I'm going to work a little bit more with him off camera, give him a little bit more highlights and stuff like that. But no. Uh, have them all finished up. So maybe by, no, he won't be ready for tomorrow. 
should say that. You never know. But uh, he's coming along. I like him. He's fantastic. Uh, so I actually, you know, the company Giga Robo, their game Giga Robo. Uh, I really actually had a lot of fun putting him together. Uh, a lot of fun painting him. A lot of fun uh, looking for. Uh, looking for looking through I should say looking through his rule set um, and seeing what kind of stuff that he can do now of course for this one here you can you can clearly see that we didn't get to the we didn't get to the grays or uh, or anything like that but you know this is giving you a general idea of, of how we're gonna highlight what I'm gonna highlight uh, maybe I'll pick out a few bit more of the, the turbines in yellow uh, definitely go into the grays, give the grays a highlight, especially on the on the hands, because he doesn't actually have any. It's just a very flat gray right now. Uh, same with the same with the lighter gray. Uh, so we're just gonna pick out. I'm gonna pick out just a few things on there, uh, and then do up the eyes. The, the he's got a set of in that face. He's got a set of red eyes and you know locked into the chest. And plus his eyes, his eyes are red, or at least that's what color uh, I decided to go with. Uh, was red, so I'm gonna see if I can throw a little bit of highlight into those things too. Um, but I did want to show you at least a little bit of the highlight. I mean, here we are. It's 20. You know, we're almost we're almost through today's session here in the workshop, and I barely got the yellow or the blue finished. So there's still lot to do on this guy. I mean, I haven't actually, I haven't even done the handle for the weapon yet. Uh, so there's a little bit of work, a little bit of work left on him, but I like how he's turning out. I really like the sculpt. Uh, the, the detail is fairly crisp. A little, there's a little bit of cleanup on, on the miniature, which I didn't do. I just went straight into, uh, went straight into building and priming, but Actually, he was really good. Uh, I was actually very surprised. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say surprised, uh, but I, I was uh, well pleasantly surprised that that uh, miniatures, other uh, that other company miniatures are living up to standards of Simon and um, Games Workshop. And it's uh it's been it's been a fun ride so far, and I hope to keep to keep to keep doing it. Um, you know, the Giga Robo guys, these were fun. The and, and you know, I hope that there's. You know, I hope I can actually find the game in in my uh, local brick and mortar store because uh, I mean kind of. I think it'd be kind of interesting to, to pick up. Now, what's what's uh, from what I've looked at at the website and the little the little blurb that I've read, it's uh, it's giant robot combat with a fully destructible uh, cityscape. So you get buildings and monster or monsters, of uh, robots and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, the picture looks pretty cool. Uh, there's a there's a a pilot board and a and a robot board and, or a mecha board or mech board or however whatever term you want to use um unfortunately i haven't had a chance to try it out but the miniatures are fun to paint but you don't know you, i mean you don't have to paint them up either you can just put them together and just hit the hit the ground running keep keep playing i mean that's kind of what it's about uh, it's turning it's turning what you know and what you love into into a hobby so if you like playing board games but you know you're looking for something more try painting the miniatures that come with your that come with your board games if you know the board games that you have have miniatures uh, and don't be worried don't you know do not worry about how they look when you when you first start out I mean let's see here. Let's see. 
that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is my first miniature that I ever painted. And that was 20 years ago. Give or take. And then, you know, if you look at kind of the current current situation, uh, I've, I've vastly, vastly improved. Uh, but I'm still learning. Just because I've been in this game now for, for two decades doesn't mean I know all that I am the greatest guru that there is. But we're out of time for today. So uh, in the meantime, paint safe, stay safe. Please do what you're asked. If you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you need to stay home, stay home. Uh, so until next time, we'll see you in the workshop.